So for this one, let's jump into data transformation and we're going to have a look at the split out node. So we'll just pop back here, set variables. We'll remove that one. So I think we've got one here we can use here. So in the split out, we just execute previous nodes. So we've got a few different objects here. So I can just simply drag and drop one of these fields and execute the step. And straight away, we can see here on the left, it's listed object, and then it's got two key value pairs underneath it. And then now, with this object field being in the split out node, it is splitting out the key value pairs. It is changing so that now you see the, the key is object, which is this top level. It's no longer object key, object key two, but the value is coming through there. And at the moment, that's all we're getting in the output because by default, the include is set to no other fields. We can change that and say all other fields, execute that step. And now we have our split out object and all of the data, all of the other data included in both objects. So that's an interesting point to note there that this, this option here, all other fields will, after splitting it out, will include all of the data in both of the, or however many uh, objects you are splitting out, or fields rather. Then there's also selected other fields. So if I just execute it here, there are no fields specified. So now we might say, let's include the string, execute that. And so again, now we have it, but it's in both of them. So it's effectively duplicating the values or the data that's not in the split and adding it on there. And then we've also got a few different options here. We've got disabling the dot notation, just turning that on or off, it's off by default. And the destination field name, so if we say uh, object split out, split out here, execute that. So we can see we can change it. If, if the name that we've got here on the left-hand side isn't the name that we want to have when it's split, then we can change the destination field name there. And then the last one is including binary. So if this input includes a binary data by default, that even if you were to say, all other fields that would not come through into and be included in each of the objects. But if we turn it on, then it will be. So binary is things like files, so images and videos and whatever else documents. Well, let's look at it with the array actually as well. So we'll put that one in there. We'll just turn all the other things off and we'll say no other fields, keep it simple. So same thing we've got, whether it's an array or whether it's an object there, it's just gonna split it out uh, into all of the other pieces and same thing if we include all other fields there we get all that data through so this is really handy for splitting out if you get a, a record returned that has sub records in it or sub fields and you want to be able to split out and uh, loop through those and a good example might be let's say you're processing emails and you want to split out the attachments field and you want to then work through and loop through each attachment, maybe uploading it or saving it somewhere else. So that would be what you'd put in here is whatever the name of the attachment field is, and it would split that out. And then you could also include all of the other fields. So in here, you'd have all the details of the email. So who's it from, who's it to, but then you'd have the detail around what that attachment was. So let's have a look at the aggregate node. So the aggregate here is combining a field from many items into a list in a single item. So we'll add that there. And now we're going to say individual fields. We just run it straight away. It's going to give us nothing at the moment because it doesn't know what it's trying to aggregate. So let's say if we add an object field name here, we'll execute that and see what we get. Okay, so now we get an object and we get the values in there as an array. And then we might want to rename the field and say list of objects. So that will then change this name here, be what you want. We can add another field to aggregate. So let's aggregate the array and we'll rename that list of array. Okay, so now we have a list of arrays, but because it's repeated over and over and because it's an array, we have a list of arrays here. So an array of arrays. And what else can we do under the Options, we've got disabling the dot notation as usual, we've got merging lists. So if we turn that on, you can see that now we can combine the, when it is finding that 
lists uh, that array of arrays, it is combining it into a single array. And we've got including binaries, which again is going to be if there's any binary data being passed in, in the input, images, documents, things like that, you can include those in here. And then there's also keeping missing and null values. So if we did have some null values here, then they would come through as well. Simple as that if that's enabled. But at the moment, everything is set there. And the other aggregate option we've got is under at the top option here instead of individual fields which is the default we've got all item data into a single list so we're going to put it in the field called data we're going to include all fields so we'll see what we get from that so this is now added it as a data object here and put all of the items underneath it and we might say specified fields and we say we only want to keep the booleans maybe so we'll that's all we'll keep but they're still separate objects here just like they're separate here but they're inside one one new object and we can include the binaries or not depending on what you're doing then we can also do the standard all fields except so maybe we want to get rid of boolean but we want everything else and again we can say uh, list of all items we can use whatever we want to call that there and that will change the the name Let's take a look back at data transformation and we're going to write down to the bottom. I'm going to have a look at the sort node and see what options we've got with this. So at the moment we'll add it in, execute it, see if we get anything. No, we don't. So we've got type, we've got simple, we've got random and we've got code. So let's just use simple to begin with. So we'll add a field to sort by. And since most of our data, all of our data is exactly the same except the object field, let's use the object field and we'll say ascending by default, we'll execute it now. So now we, we should see, because this is already in ascending order, we don't see any difference, it looks the same. But let's change it to descending and we should see it get reversed. So now it's object value three, two and one. So that's what we would expect there. And we can sort by another field. In this instance, it's not gonna make a difference because the data is all the same. But if we want to, we could sort by, let's say you sort first by first name and then by last name or last name, first name, something like that. You might want to do or location and name. Under options, we've only got the disable dot notation uh, option. We don't have any other options there for the, for the simple type. So let's have a look at random. So we don't get any options for random and we just execute it and we can see it goes three, one, two, execute again, one, two, three. 132, 231. So this is quite handy if you need to, for some reason, randomize your list. Like you might have, let's say you're creating, you might have data in your database that has like answers to a question, that, that like a multiple choice question. And so it has four answers and each time you want to return it in a different order. So it's not exactly the, the, the right answer isn't in, in exactly the same spot. Or maybe you want to randomize the order of the questions in your survey. So you would have this uh, that would just randomize it each time that the workflow ran to build the, the survey, something like that. And then we've also got code, which is quite handy. So this is one of the other one of the few other places where you can use code in uh, a node rather than using the code node. And so you can put in whatever kind of sort here based on it's going to default to what's in here at the moment. Uh, but you can add whatever JavaScript code you want in here to sort it in any way that you want. Just like have that control over it. So that for this kind of simple data, it's not really going to add any value, but for much more complex data, you might have a very complex way of sorting it.